Hi, I'm Katya. Welcome back to Total Recall, a show where we talk about real experiences that may or may not have happened at some point in the past. At this point in RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 2, we are, the battle is chunky. <laughs> this is the point in the competition where the claws are out, the swords are out, and the batons tucked away. Now we're watching RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 2, a sidebar. There's a lot of recap shows. There are a lot of people who are uh, searching for success on YouTube via recap shows. And just in the competitive uh, business spirit, I am going to proclaim that my recap show is the best. Mini challenge. Okay, there are balls, there are long sacks, long stretchy sacks, balls, shirtless men, pig masks, animal masks, astroturf, took too long, edited down, golf in, advertisers, tug of war between respectability and compromise, selling out, underwear, Andrew Christian, blah, 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 who cares, Alaska won. My hair changed, but we're still the same. Maxi challenge. This is exactly where I get the job done. What is a businesswoman? What is a businesswoman? Is it a woman who does business? Is uh, Janet Wu a businesswoman? I don't know. I just invented, I just thought of that name and I don't know who that is. So I'm a businesswoman and like, I, like I'll, I'll reiterate, not only can you tell I'm a businesswoman because I've what, let my hair down and put on a jacket, I'm also here to get the job done, okay? There is an impersonal side of business that has to do with money. This is just numbers. This is, this is not necessarily value in ethics or meaning or whatever. This is just numbers. This is a, a, a cold hearted way to accumulate cash. We create products and merchandise. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Ah, oh, and I'm not just talking about these 32 double G breasts. I am actually, I, I'm talking about the breasts and I'm talking about the words written on them. I sell this shirt and you should go buy it. Ding. Yes. Okay, so we walk into the workroom and what are there? Pig masks and dicks and balls and asses. Yeah, it's the morning, I don't care that much. But what's on the table that is of interest to me are cheap products. A drag queen is always using cheap products to, to make herself look not that way. Pearls before swine. No, it's um, uh, oh, you flush it, I flaunt it. That's the essence of drag. What you like on the mantle, I put in my toilet. <laughs> it's the other way around. So we're told, we were later told, I don't remember. Recall. So we have to come up with a product and we have to come up with what is the product? How, what does it look like? How do we market it? And then get in drag to shoot a fucking commercial for it. This is again, another great challenge. Like, you know, regardless of what, if, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you're probably a fan of the show, at least a passing fan of the show. And if you're a super fan like me, you know that six for six, like these challenges are good. I, like huge props and kudos to the producers of RuPaul's Drag Race and Ru and, and everybody involved because this shows how you take drag, which is a lowbrow art form, and then you push people who have all types of skill sets into uncomfortable situations perhaps that they're not used to and their talent is allowed to bloom and not bloom. And then you see the multifaceted nature of a drag queen. Like they have strengths in one area and then uh, deficiencies in others. I fucking love the show. It is a really good show. I swear to God. I mean, that's like a... That's a, that's a sincere statement, mother. I know irony is all the rage these days. This challenge in season seven would have made me crumble. Absolutely, because I just, I, I, my brain shuts down when there's that much pressure and fear. I don't know if you, I don't know if that's relatable to you. Whoa, actually, wait, wait, wait. Oh my God, Avi. The irony is that my spray is called crisis control. And I literally created something for myself at the time and I didn't even realize it. What, what do I know? Mental illness. And what do I need? Relief. So I saw a spray bottle and I was like, okay, in a feeling of crisis, like right now, what can I spray on myself to convince myself that everything's gonna be okay? Even though it doesn't work. It's a placebo, it's snake oil. So now we're told at some point, uh, it's either on the main stage or in the workroom, I don't know. Can't recall. Did you do a ding? Did you do a ding for that? There's three chances. Rue has the audacity during my workroom uh, visit to tell our guest that my product is obviously, oh, it's a comedy product. As if that strips it of any value and, well, number two, A, how dare you, and number two, what? Listen, yeah, it's a comedy thing, but it's also, oh, it's just, <laughs> I guess they're right. <laughs> they're just right, it doesn't even work. <laughs> it doesn't even work, it doesn't, it's snake oil. So I do the commercial. I go, you know, they tell me this is a bad idea and I say, you're crazy, because guess what? I'm crazy, that's where I flip the script. They said, how much are you gonna sell it for? I was like, 20, they're like, ah, oh. I was like, 10. There's like, see, you don't have any integrity. I was like, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. I wanna give props to myself. Have you given yourself a hug today? I didn't know, but Rue was there in a hoodie. Oh, right hand, God. 
So halfway through, I mean, oh, I remember this. I remember this. This, this is where my memory is, is um, safe. I, I was falling down over and over. And um, on the, 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 the blistery brink of, of, of good and uh, um, and then I look over, right behind camera would be one or two, I see Rue and she's in a, she's in a hoodie, uh, very light sweats, you know, just like very incognito, that's what she would say. And she's looking like this. And I get frazzled immediately, but then I start perform for her. And then it goes smoothly. And I was like, okay, I could either be, I could either crumble right now, or that gave, that gave me the extra to kind of go and get it done. And I got it done. And I gave them meticulous instructions about editing, what backgrounds I wanted to use, what the timing would be like. I directed completely 100% the whole thing. The turkey gag, if they don't include the turkey gag, then this is an indication that the producers don't fully understand my sense of humor. Because I started, this was, this was a thing that occurred to me in the moment that I became inflexible about. I was in the kitchen with a turkey. Holding a turkey, I'm not a cook, never cooked anything. My only, the only time I used the pit crew was to come in and take the turkey away. That's comedy. <laughs> it, it lets people know who I am. That I don't cook, but I have a turkey. Well, that's our episode for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please join us on our journey as we unfold, unfurl, and defibrillate our bodies to understand the complex realities of our minds. If you haven't already watched the 1990 film Total Recall by Paul Verhoeven, I actually encourage you to do that because as an action movie, it's like, I don't know, it's pretty good. There's, it's pretty violent. The title sequence is awesome. The fact that he chooses a woman who's not Sharon Stone is interesting. And it involves bulging eyeballs. Bulging eyeballs are like never not a good time. So watch it and uh, join us next week where we won't talk about it. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Do I even have a channel? Is it a, is it a channel or is it a dream? I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, you know, I, I, I just accept an apology that comes from me every five minutes, whether I say it or not. I'm learning about myself. <laughs>